everyone, and welcome to another episode of Newscast. My name is Sam Healy. In these videos, we tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps that are in the description below. For general news today, UKGE was a huge hit for Mythic Games this year. Our booth focused on two of our retail titles, Super Fantasy Brawl and Steam Watchers, and the crowd really reacted well to both. Our booth was reportedly always busy, and we were able to sell most of what we brought to the convention. UKGE's numbers were also high, with a total attendance of no less than 39,527 attendees. So it was a very positive weekend all around. This week, my family and I will be going on vacation, so I won't be doing my live videos this week or the next, but I'll do my best to get at least one in on the 23rd or 24th, and then one last video in on Thursday, June 30th. So keep an eye out for those. Additionally, I won't be able to do newscasts next week either for the same reasons, but it will continue on the 21st. Finally, for general news today, Anastir's Pledge Manager is scheduled to open on Wednesday, June 8th at 7 p.m. Central European Time, which would make it 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time here in the U.S. So make sure you mark that time on your calendar this week, because it'll be here before you know it. Now, we do have some tidbits of information on a few of our projects, so let's get to them. For Joan of Arc today, as we've reported recently, preparations for the battle mode continue to progress, but we're still waiting on the final draft of the battle map that makes use of the wall sections and the Teutonic Knights expansion. So, instead of waiting for the battle map to be ready for inclusion, we've decided to release the battle mode in PDF format on Wednesday, June 8th as we currently have it. Then, as soon as the map is completed, the file will be updated and we'll make sure that everyone is aware when we do that. For Solomon Kane today, just a bit of a heads up that next week, we're going to be able to share a bit more about a new expansion that would be added to the reprint. So make sure you tune in to next week's What's Up Wednesday update on the Kickstarter page. Additionally, Howard Days is happening in Cross Plains, Texas at the Robert E. Howard Museum on June 10th and 11th. They have some neat activities going on during both days, including a silent auction, open gaming, and being able to tour the museum. This year's theme is the REH Influence in Gaming. So if you're able to go, it seems like it would be a great time for any REH fandom. If you're in the area and interested, check out their website at howarddays.com. Last week for Darkest Dungeon, we shared a couple of short videos from the factory showing the printing production of some cards and the printed wrap for the core box. Today we wanted to reiterate some information we were able to share in our What's Up Wednesday update last week that just wasn't quite ready when the newscast was being put together. We've seen a lot of questions about the contents of the Wave 1 shipments, so here's a recap of what you can expect in the English version of Wave 1. You'll first of all have the Core Box and the Crimson Court expansion, the Musketeer promotional miniature, the Darkest Organizer add-on, the Heirloom Chest add-on, the Playmat add-on, the Sleeves, and the Touch of Darkness paint option will be added to any applicable items included in this list. Now, we were also able to share that some headway had been made in optimizing the packout configuration of the core box. And here's what we found. First of all, the core box allows you to store all your unsleeved cards in deck boxes or all your sleeved cards and your box lid will close perfectly. Second, if you added the darkest organizer and wish to store it in your core box, then the core box allows you to store the darkest organizer and unsleeved cards with zero lid lift. If you added the darkest organizer and wish to store it in your core box, then the core box allows you to store the organizer and sleeved cards with about one inch of lid lift. If this lid lift bothers you, please remember that the darkest organizer is a box in itself that closes and can therefore be stored separately. As you'll remember, we had expressed doubts that the reconfiguration of the core box would allow for the storage of sleeved cards, so we're very happy to have been able to provide a degree of solution to that issue. 
Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show because you just never know what Leo might have up his leaves. As mentioned earlier, I'll be on vacation until June 18th, so there won't be any Mythic Plays videos or newscasts until I return. That's it for today, though. Once again, stay safe and play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>